should you consider an ultra-wide panel for gaming? Only gaming. Now, I know this is a subjective question, but there are a few objective things we can analyze, like field of view and GPU overhead. We all generally regard ultra-wides as optimal editing panels, but that should be rather obvious. What isn't obvious are the gaming benefits for an ultra-wide over a typical 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So, let's investigate. You can choose to look at an ultra-wide panel in one of two ways. Either a reduction in the height of a higher resolution 16x9 screen, or an increase in the width of a lower resolution 16x9 screen. Let me use my personal LG 29UM57 29-inch ultra-wide monitor, which you can find by the way in this video's description, as an example here. The resolution of this monitor is 2560x1080, giving it a 21x9 aspect ratio. Since its horizontal pixel count is 2560, we can then say that this monitor is similar to a 1440p monitor but with a 25% vertical reduction. Likewise, we can say that this monitor is similar to a 1080p monitor but with a 25% horizontal expansion. These are in terms of pixels by the way, not physical widths and heights, although they're all geometrically similar if we're talking 16x9 versus 21x9. Okay, Greg, great. Uh, so one point of view is slightly more optimistic than the other. Who really cares? Well, games care. I'm curious to see how games see ultrawides. Do they remove excess fields of view from the top end? And or bottom, or add additional fields of view to the left and right, or both? In all honesty, I have no idea. Now, most modern AAA titles include ultra-wide support up front just because ultra-wides have been around for a while and these games are, are brand new. But for games that aren't necessarily new or I guess, well, it depends on what you regard as new and what you regard as old, uh, but we're talking around 2013-ish, maybe as far back as 2012, 2011. Do those games currently have support for ultra-wides? And if not, how would we notice that they don't? Would it just be a stretched image or would they just, I don't know, chop off the top or something? How do they solve that problem? So that's what we're going to investigate here in this video. So in GTA 5, quite simply, the game extends the horizontal edges of the field of view. What you're seeing in the darker box is uh, actually the game game recorded on a 1440p monitor just scaled down to a 1080p format in the vertical. The lighter image behind it is that of an ultra-wide 2560 by 1080 display. This is great news, essentially we aren't being limited vertically by using an ultra-wide, in fact because the horizontal aspect is stretched we're seeing a wider field of view, which I would personally argue is better than that of a 16x9 panel. In a first person shooter like Call of Duty there are plenty of not modern first person shooters out there it's going to depend. In the case of Black Ops 3, which isn't really all that old to be honest, the game did not appear to extend the horizontal field of view, only stretch it out. So in essence, this one's taking the 16 by 9 standard ratio and stretching it into a 21 by 9 ratio, which tells me that this game, while support for ultra-wide resolutions is included, is not properly optimized for ultra-wide panels. You can tell from this transition here that the game is just artificially stretching the 16 by 9 ratio, so your field of view is still just as narrow as it it was with the standard 16x9, only things look a bit more stretched and distorted, which is something I would not recommend uh, for a game like this. City Skylines, in contrast, definitely is optimized just as GTA 5 is. You can clearly see in these clips here that additional detail can be seen on the left and right of the ultra-wide picture that is removed when in the standard 1440p resolution. This is zoomed out as far as possible, by the way. In a game like this where productivity is key, ultra-wides are definitely beneficial. You can see more and do more without needing to move or scroll as much. Funny how the same thing can be said for content creation as well. Even Minecraft is optimized for ultra-wide panels, which surprised me a bit given that Black Ops 3, a game which costs significantly more, is not. The next thing to investigate then is the scaling factor between an ultra-wide and a 16x9 aspect ratio. I put each of the three major titles previously analyzed, Minecraft is always finicky so it was left out, through a series of benchmarks and found that with the exception of Cities, which heavily leverages a CPU and that's why nothing really changed between all three tests, these games scaled equally when it came to minimum frame rates and by 10% when it came to GPU and VRAM usage. Bumping up from a resolution of 1920x1080 to 2560x1080 resulted in a 25% reduction in minimum frames per second for Black Ops 3 and 15% for GTA 5. Bumping again from the ultra-wide standard to 2560 by 1440 resulted in a slight scaling reduction for both titles. And this is likely due to the fact that upgrading from 1080 ultra-wide to 1440 adds less pixels into the mix than the jump does from 1080 to 1080 ultra-wide. These percentages aren't very high, not as high as I'd imagine they'd be. So if you're reaching that 60 FPS sweet spot with your current rig and standard monitor, 
monitor, upgrading to an ultra-wide shouldn't result in a substantial enough performance hit to justify a graphics card upgrade, which is great news. A few tweaks of some in-game settings should suffice for the most part as long as your CPU is pulling its own weight, preferably somewhere around i5 or overclocked FX8 core territory. All that's left to consider then is price, and that's your discretion, not mine. On average, ultra-wides are considerably more expensive than their narrower counterparts, but as we've proven here, offer a wider field of view in-game. Great especially for those racing titles and first-person shooters as long as they're optimized and you can check Steam or forums to verify that those games are before you decide to game on an ultra-wide uh, in any of those titles. If you liked what you saw in this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Leave a comment, let me know what you think about ultra-wide gaming, if it's your thing or not. Like I said, for the most part, subjective, but there are some real tangible benefits to gaming on an ultra-wide panel. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.